Oh, what? Oh, there's a big one on. Oh no, that was a huge one. Man, no. Uh, oh, there's a good one. That's what we need, guys. Yes. What is going on, guys? And welcome to another episode of All Mouth Bassing. Today, I'm out at a local lake that I usually go to to bass fish. But last few times I've been out here, I've been seeing some pretty nice schools of big bluegill. And I've been meaning to get out for a bluegill catch and cook lately, specifically with this bamboo cane pole I picked up recently. I've actually never used a bamboo pole or a cane pole in general before. So this will be a first for me. I've actually like not even as a kid or anything, just I've never picked one up and tried to use one to catch a fish in my life. So this will be an absolute first for me, a definite first for the channel and hopefully I could get it done today. I'll be experimenting with this and pretty much figuring it out. So uh, that's pretty much the plan. I don't have a ton more to say about it. Got some live worms to rig up on this. I've got this bobber that comes with it, but I've also got another one with me and I might even try going without any kind of bobbers or indicators or anything. Not really sure the exact plan. I just know I've got this bamboo pole and some live worms and I'm hoping to get on some bluegill to cook up later. So let's get after it and see what we could do. Okay guys, I'm rigged up now. I tied about a eight foot length of six pound mono on. I've got a little float on there with about a couple foot of leader going to a 32nd ounce, just regular old lead ball head jig. And I've got a chunk of live red worm on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this out there and hopefully I could get on one of these big old bluegill. There's some straight up chunkers in there. Oops, and the bobber scared the crap out of them, but hopefully, uh, oh, I'm already getting bit. Didn't take it, but I did get bit. down there grabbing at it. I don't think anything big's on it right now though. I think I've got one. Oh, and I yanked it right out of its mouth. It got my worm too, so I have to get a new worm on there now, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, I got a new worm rigged up now. I'm not stoked the first worm got stolen that quick, but I'm pretty stoked that they seem to be biting pretty good because they were pretty much all over it. So let's get this worm out there and see if we can get a big one. Oh, what? He had it good. I don't know how I didn't get the hook set. I think I'm gonna change hooks, guys. All right, I wasn't really feeling that plain lead jig there, so I switched off to a Fire Tiger Tungsten Ice Jig. These are really what I prefer to throw for panfish, so I'm gonna go ahead and send this out there with this uh, pretty good sized little red worm and see if we can get one of these gills. There's a big, big gill right out there. Pretty much landed right on top of it, but I actually spooked it. There we go, I'm off it, yes. Oh, okay, turns out they want a little bit of movement. I just caught a dinky dink. Definitely not what we're after, but at least it's something. It's a green sunny. So not even really the species we're after technically because I was hoping for some gills. Okay, not quite what we're after and not quite big enough to eat. So we're gonna get this guy back in the water I'm just gonna toss it because I can't set it in gentle where I'm at and uh, Yeah, let's get back after it That little sunny was at least nice enough to leave me with my last worm. So let's get it back out there. I Noticed they kind of charged after it after they saw it move so I guess I'll probably just give it a little twitch every now and again, and hopefully that works. That seemed to be what triggered that bite. Oh, there's a big one on. Oh, no! That was a huge one. That one would have literally been a perfect eater. And now it's... Now I'm in weeds. <laughs> Come on. All right. I got a new worm on now. Let's get it. 
try to get this out there pretty far. Seems like that's where the bigger ones are. Maybe if I change the depth a little, I'm gonna try giving it a little bit more leader and see what happens. All right, I gave it quite a bit more leader now. I'm gonna see if they're more willing to eat if it's a little deeper in the water. If that doesn't work, maybe I'll put it a little more shallow and see what happens. Oh, it's actually a nice green sunny tried grabbing that the second it landed. And I don't think that was the one. It's a little smaller. A little bigger than the last one though at least. But uh, not quite what we're after. Halfway decent little green sunny. But some of the bluegills I'm seeing in there are three times the size of this. And those are what I'm after. So anyway, let's toss this guy shallow and try for another one. Well, I came out here thinking I'd have more than enough worms, but I'm kind of starting to second guess that now. Got a new piece of worm on again, though. Let's get it out there. I really need one of these big ones to eat and actually take the hook. That would be quite ideal. Something's on it. There we go. Uh, it's not quite as big as I need. It is a bluegill, though, so step in the right direction. Just a tiny bit smaller than I'm after. Pretty little fish though. Let's toss it back in, get another worm on, and get back after it. All right, re-rigged for like the 10th time already. Let's get it out there and try for a bigger one. Oh, I just got another worm stolen. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm gonna try some more. I've got a new piece of worm on there. Let's get it out there. I landed right on top of a small one. Oh, that was a big one and I lost it. Man, still got my worm at least though. But that was the one we needed. That would have ate. Crap. Sometimes they'll eat twice though, let's see. Man, that sucks. Something just bit, but didn't hold on. Oh, I'm on a little one. I think I was on it for a minute and didn't even realize it because it was so small. That is just a dinky, dinky little hybrid. He stole my worm too. That is fantastic. <laughs> All right, bluegill catch and cook, take 20. Try again. All right, we're almost, nah, it's about the same size as the first bluegill. Man, I just need something bigger. <laughs> Got another one, at least it's a bluegill, but it's not quite the size we're after. Almost dropped him, but I caught him. But anyway, let's toss this guy back in the water and try again. And unfortunately, I seem to lose my worm on just about every bite today, which is kind of a bummer. So I actually tried shortening the leader instead of lengthening it because lengthening it didn't really seem to help a ton. So now I've got it a little bit shorter. I'm going to see if they're interested in it being suspended a little closer to the surface. Okay, they definitely don't want it with a short leader. I'm not even getting any interest at all now. I'm going to go ahead and lengthen that leader back up. I think that'll be good now. There's a bass out there. I actually kind of don't want him to eat. Oh, there's a good one. That's what we need, guys. Yes. Those are the big ones I'm talking about. Finally got the species and size we're after, guys. 
pretty good bluegill just about the size of my hand that's about what you're after when you're looking for eaters so got this one on a stringer hopefully we could catch a few more like that all right glad we finally managed to get on a pretty nice one at least gonna keep after it i'd like to get at least one or two more nice ones like that for the catch and cook so hopefully we could do that I swear every single bite I lose a worm though, so this is about the 100th worm I've put on here. Let's get it back out there and see what we could do with it. Alright. Still not quite big enough, but... Ooh. He jumped out of my hands, dang it. I'm gonna get him back in the water. He got a little dirt on, whoops. But anyway, still not quite big enough, but at least we got another bluegill. Man, this one is so close to being big enough, but just a tiny bit too small. I had the camera cut because I caught a load of dinks in between, and I lost a bunch of worms, and I just didn't figure y'all wanted to see me catching dinks and re-rigging worms all day. So anyway, this one's just a tiny bit smaller than what I need, unfortunately. So we're going to get it back in the water. <sighs> Hopefully we can catch something a little bit bigger than that. Well guys, I just caught a decent one. It's barely a five incher, but I think it'll be just big enough where I'll throw it on there and I'll cook this one up whole. On second thought, I think this one is a little bit tiny. I'm gonna toss it back. All right, guys. There's one just slightly bigger than that last one, but this one's definitely going on a stringer. It's just a little smaller than what I'd usually wanna keep, but I'm comfortable keeping this one since I already have a pretty big one, and if I can catch one more, at least halfway decent one, I think we'll get them cooking. Alright guys, I got another one that's just big enough for me to be comfortable keeping. None of them are really huge by any means. The first one was pretty decent that I decided to keep, but the second two are relatively small, but like I said, just big enough. So. I'm going to go ahead, throw this guy on a stringer, and I'm going to get that catch and cook going. Okay guys, I found a nice little shady tree to do the catch and cook under. I'm going to go ahead and set the stove up before I do anything else. And typically, I wouldn't really keep anything smaller than that first one I decided to keep. But I literally fished for about three hours, and those were the three biggest I caught. I don't really think I'm going to get on anything too much bigger with that cane pole because I don't really have the reach and can't really get out there as far as some of those bigger ones are feeding. So I had to kind of settle with what I could get and I'm just going to have a little late afternoon snack now I guess. But anyway, found a nice little shade tree here. The lighting's probably not going to be the best because there's little gaps in the tree so some sunlight's getting through but y'all have to live with that. All right, though, guys, I got the stove all put together now. Now it's time to go get some firewood. Stick honestly should be most of what I need. I don't think I usually need much more than that. All right, yeah, I'll just get that all broken down and that should probably be enough. Okay guys, I'm actually gonna cook all three of these whole. Not even gonna bother to fillet them or anything since they're so small. So this is the first, just the big one. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just real quick, put a cut down the belly pull the guts out and then I'm going to do the same with the other two. I'm going to pop the heads off, pop the tails off, and then just cook the bodies whole and there will be a decent little bit of meat on each side of these spines here. So 
and that's the plan i'm not going to show it for youtube purposes but i'm going to do that and then we'll get them cooking well all right guys i went ahead and processed those bluegill i've got them all cut up i got all the uh, internals out and everything that could potentially make me sick it's basically just meat on there now and they're ready to get cooking so i actually found another shade tree to finish this up at because the other one had some kind of low hanging branches and i was a little worried i'm pretty sure i'll be able to keep the fire under control just fine but i was a little worried if any flames kicked up or anything they could potentially catch some of those branches so i moved to another tree that i think is a little bit better to get some shade under i'm going to go ahead and get that fire started get these on it and we'll be cooking all right i got all the wood situated let's get this fire going okay fire's going now let's go ahead and get those gills seasoned up get them in some foil and get them cooking i actually only brought one spice today well it's actually several spices but one kind of seasoning it's just uh tony thatchery's Crioli seasoning if you all have watched any of my catch and cooks before you've almost definitely seen it before but uh, I like putting this stuff on fish. It tastes pretty good with just about any seafood. So actually most meats in general it's pretty good with. But uh, I got that and some canola oil. So I'll go ahead and spray this foil down with some oil. Hit the fish with a little bit too. So the seasoning sticks. All right. Foils oiled down. Let's go ahead and throw some of this seasoning. We'll get a little bit on inside the gills. Get some on the outsides. Do that with all three. Probably throw a little more oil on there. Throw a little more seasoning on there in general. Make a nice little kind of almost, uh, what do you call it in there? Marinade. <laughs> like a nice little marinade. That's the word I was looking for. But anyway, got all that seasoned up. Let's go ahead, get this wrapped up in a little packet. That should be pretty good. I'll we'll throw it on the fire. Give it about five minutes on each side, give or take. And we'll pull it and eat it. Alright guys, I actually ended up giving it about six minutes on each side. And I'm starting to think I may have charred it. So that might have been a mistake. But we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and let this cool off. And then we'll take a taste test and see how it goes. It actually smells really good, and as you can see, the top doesn't look quite as charred as the bottom did at least, so that's a little promising. Alright guys, they're actually not too terribly charred. They're pretty crispy on the one side, but the other side is pretty much perfect, so I'll probably still at least munch on the charred sides a little bit, but at least half of each side is going to be delicious, I could tell just looking at it, but anyway... I forgot to bring any silverware, so just gonna go ahead and see what I could do without it. Hopefully I could peel some of the skin off without a fork. Oh, got a bunch of bones in that bite. <laughs> Man, that is so good though. Every time I eat bluegill, I forget how delicious it is. Look at that delicious flaky white meat. So good. Mm. let's see how the skin peels off the charred side now my guess is not quite so well yikes 
Yeah, it's on there pretty good. I'm going to get as much of that meat off there as I can without wasting it, but we'll see how it goes. I at least managed to get most of the big chunks off there, and the meat actually wasn't charred at all. It was just the skin that was charred, so that's good news, and the meat was all really, really good so far. So I'm going to go ahead, eat these two little guys, and I'm going to wrap it up, and I'll see you guys on the outro. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching another episode and thank you so much for sticking around till the end. I know that wasn't really the most exciting episode ever. It didn't really get into the most action and I wasn't catching like giant fish of any kind of crazy species or anything, but I've been meaning to get out and do a little bluegill catch and cook with the uh, bamboo cane pole there. And I'm glad I finally got around to doing it. I've been really focused on doing a lot of bass and other kind of content lately, mostly bass and catfish this summer. But I wanted to try doing that and I got it done. Might not have got any huge ones or anything, but I did manage to get a few eaters at least and they really were absolutely delicious. Bluegill really is just like the best white meat ever. If y'all like crappie, then bluegill is just about as good, honestly. So, had a little bit of fun there. The cane pole was a little bit of a challenge considering I've never used one before. It's not quite the same as using any kind of other rod reel setup I've used, but still quite a bit of fun and I'm glad I got out there. So, thanks again for watching guys. I'll see you on the next one and I'll see you on the water.